this afternoon's uh, platform where we come together under uh, uh, the uh, uh, auspices of RHA, but meeting with different friends way beyond the RHA family, just to share on things that are of mutual benefit out of the Word of God. Now, today, uh, beginning today, and uh, for the coming um, uh, another next two Sundays after this, uh, two afternoons, I will be talking on uh, a subject uh, that uh, is very close to the heart. And uh, we will look at this from the book of Acts in chapter 3 and verses 1 to 10. The Bible says the following. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man who had been lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, Saint, look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately the man's feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was uh, the same man who sat at the gate uh, beautiful, uh, the, at, uh, begging for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. A remarkable uh, piece uh, that talks here about this man, this individual, and uh, uh, about some of the issues that happened at that time. I just want you to notice one thing that comes out of these words and we are going to be considering how that we should respond and rise to our full potential. You know, when God desires us to rise to fulfill that which he has assigned for our lives. So we'll talk about the, on the topic rising to your full potential. Within each one of us, there is a potential. There is not a single man, not a single woman no matter what tribe, no matter what color, and no matter what corner of the planet they live uh, 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 on, there's not a single one of us who has been born without a, a promise of a particular potential. Everybody of us carries within ourselves a capacity to be more than what we are right now, to contribute, you know, around us. 
for us to excel, to reach as it were to that which God had placed within us and the thing that will redefine who we are in the eyes of the society around us. And it doesn't matter how somebody was born, and I pick this particular passage because of this individual. The Bible says some remarkable things about him. So remember our topic is rising to your full potential. May you rise to your full potential. So I invite you into this word of God that we may look at this together. Here was a man and who was born a cripple. You know, the Bible says he was a cripple from the womb. So there was some uh, whatever shortcoming, some defect uh, uh, in the time of gestation. And uh, he is birthed and is born. And uh, initially, maybe the mother and the father notice nothing wrong with their baby son. But uh, as uh, the weeks become months and the months uh, become a year or so, they begin to notice that there is a particular weakness in his feet. That when they try to make him stand, his feet always buckle up and the baby always has to be held again. And they realize that he has this defect. And on the child grows, maybe celebrates his first birthday, second birthday, third birthday, and the child is a cripple. And the child grows all the way to become a man. Because the Bible introduces him to us here by saying, and a certain man who was a lame from his mother's womb, they carried him all the time and brought him to the gate of the temple, which was called beautiful in Hebrew, the beautiful gate. Here was a man who was at a beautiful place with an ugly problem. You know, and it's so much a truth about what is uh, uh, occurring or what can occur around about us on a daily basis. Is that not true? We can live in a, a nice house. Uh, but have a bad uh, marital relationship. Uh, we, 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 can, we, can, we can put on the best suit, nice suit, but uh, our pockets are empty. We have not a single uh, a penny in our pocket. Uh, we can have beautiful hair, and underneath the hair we can have a, a, a very troubled mind, you know, uh, uh, on the inside. We, we, we have this contrast that we can have around us in the world, you know, and uh, great wealth. Somebody can have great wealth, but be in very poor health at the same time. There yeah, is a contrast. Here was a man. The gate is beautiful, but the man has an ugly problem that he has to contend with. He no longer feels like a man like the other men. He cannot take up his place, you know, as other men take up their place because uh, he is carried on a stretcher and he is laid at the entrance of the uh, beautiful gate uh, on the outside. And as people are going in to worship, he just uh, uh, begs for uh, whatever they may have you know, because according uh, to the religious order of the time, everybody must also carry something for the poor, must have carried something, you know, to bless the poor with. And that's what he relied on for his uh, existence. Now, here was a man uh, uh, in this situation, and uh, uh, mostly we can identify with it. If we can't identify with his cripple status, we can identify like the things I've just described here. I mean, you can have a nice job. And everybody envies the job you have, but you have a very bad boss. I mean, it makes your life miserable. You, you go to work only because you need the salary. You don't go to work because you are happy with the job that you have. I mean, there is this contrast that we can have. When everyone else thinks you are really blessed, but deep down on the inside you know that things are less than what they can be. They are less than what they should be. You could be at a better level than where you are. Now, this man represents many people. You know, uh, they wallow in the dust when they could be in, the, in, in a palace. They, uh, they are down when they could be up. And I want us to look at a couple of things in the coming uh, three sessions. So this one and the one coming week and the one the week after that. I want to look at these issues because they would help us to understand how to come off to the level where the best in us can begin to flow on the outside. Obviously, we must all understand this one thing, 
that uh, every time you want to rise to the best, you know, of what you could be, there is always an opposition that would be against you to keep you at the level where you are. And you know, the Lord Jesus puts it this way. He says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And so in God's plan and purpose, it is to bring you into the fullness, into the very best. It's to bring you to the highest dimension and the very best of levels where the best that is in you can begin to overflow out of you. That's God's purpose. That's why God came. That's why the Lord Jesus paid the price, the ultimate price on the cross is that you can rise to your full potential. May you rise to your full potential irrespective of what your background is, irrespective of where you were born or how you were born or where you grew up or what you lacked and what you didn't have or what life denied you, you know, or maybe circumstances of life just dropped you and you've missed out on certain issues. I want to share with you out of God's word how you can rise to your full potential. Now, I want to bring just a couple of things out of uh, this man's uh, life. Uh, and I want to look again at verses 2, 3, and 5. And look at verses 2 and 3 and 5 says, And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, uh, um, uh, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Whom seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked alms. Now look at the verse 5. And when Peter, you know, and John looked at him and said, Hey, look at us. The Bible says he gave heed to them, verse 5, expecting to receive something from them. He paid maximum attention to these two gentlemen, thinking, man, I think I'm about to land some very good, more than just a little change. I must be, be landing quite some good money. I mean, uh, no, people don't usually uh, uh, stop me to have this kind of a conversation by saying, look at us. And that's how they address him. I want you to capture something. This marks the mentality of this man. He has always grown up begging. He has always grown up stretching his hand. He has always grown up because of his condition. He, it has actually conditioned him to always be in a place where he's expecting others to actually donate to him, to give to him. He's expecting others to be able to lay it all before him. And sometimes we can miss the best in life. When, 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 when we are conditioned to a particular mode, you know, uh, uh, of, of, of going about things, I want to challenge you in the very first uh, place to say, hey, you, you need to change your perception. That's the very first thing I want to talk to you about. Change your perception. You can never change from where you are until you change your perception. What keeps you in the place where you are and doing the things that you do? And what keeps you going round in the circles in the same place when others are actually taking off on a, off a tangent and taking off and rising to a higher dimension and you keep going round and round in circles is because of your perception. The way you perceive things is the way you will condition yourself to be. And that's an important thing. So the Bible says to us a very remarkable scripture. He says, do not be conformed to the standards of this world, but rather be renewed how, you know, by, by, you know, by, 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 by the changing of your mind through the word of God, that you may understand that which is the good, the perfect, and the, uh, the upright will of God. Because where the mind is, that's where the life will be too. The Bible puts it more aptly. In fact, Solomon puts it more aptly when he says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Wherever you are, whatever you are conditioned to do, whatever it is that marks your routine, tells me about the kind of the thoughts that you entertain. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The Bible is very explicit about that. It makes it very plain, clear. And so if a man can change the way he thinks, he can change the way he lives. If he can change the way he perceives the things, he can change the way he responds to the situation and circumstances that are around them. And this is the experience of this man whom everybody 
everybody considered to be unfortunate and everybody looked down on him. And you know, many a time I want us to understand we have been conditioned or been raised to believe that things do not need to change. We even feel guilty when we have to initiate or embrace change. But you know, I want you to understand, this man was lame from his mother's womb. So he was familiar with adversity. And we can get so used to being on the wrong side until the wrong side begins to look like the, no, the normal thing. Like we are saying the new normal. You know, but yes, of course we know all of us know there's nothing normal about it. Although we call it the new normal because uh, it is still something that uh, uh, is out of the norm. Um, that now I love you when I don't, I don't, when I don't shake your hand. I love you. I love you when I don't embrace you. It used to be that when I embrace you after I've not seen you for a long time, I'm expressing, you know, how much I feel about you. But now when we stand at a distance, it means that's when I'm expressing my true love. Nothing could be uh, uh, really normal about the times that we are calling the new normal. But I want you to understand, sometimes you can be so used to that which is uh, uh, the unusual that eventually the unusual becomes the usual. For this man to be carried by his friends and deposited at the beautiful gate and begin begging for alms while he is lying there on the stretcher, for him that was no more living. And yet uh, when the, 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 the two apostles turn up, they are about to show him that no, 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 no. This is not, this is not what you were created to be. This is not what you were made to be. This is, there's more to you than what you are doing and, and the way that you are actually going about life. So I just want to say to you, it does not matter how long the adversity has prevailed. You must reposition yourself, you know, to take off. You can get so used to your condition until your condition conditions you. Do not settle in your condition. Change it. You can make lemonade out of your lemons. You know, don't just say these lemons are so bitter. I mean, I mean, this lemon, man, I love lemons, but they're so bitter. No, add a little bit of sugar. And then you'll be tasting something far different than what you've been tasting. So you are not a victim. You are a victor. Somewhere within you, there is a great man. Somewhere within you, there is a great woman. Let's talk now, heart to heart. I don't know what is it that uh, where life has deposited you. We are passing right now through challenges circumstances. Uh, there's been uh, the, 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 the pandemic around us. Businesses have been shaken and household incomes have depleted and, and, and you know, uh, um, others have lost employment altogether. The landlord is breathing heavily on you, you know, demanding that you must still meet your obligations. Uh, it's a challenging times and young men and women have, have got impressive, uh, you know, uh, uh, certificates uh, from outstanding institutions of learning but there's no employment and uh, and you know we think all that life gives us is to be employed and we must just look for employment and we must just uh, you know run the streets trying to find it's the way we think that conditions us I want to challenge you there is a champion in you there is a victor in you there is a great man and a great woman on the inside of you you can become more than what we are seeing on the now you know out of your life but the number one thing that needs to happen is is that there must be a transformation in your mind. Change your perception. Change your perception. When, when, when Peter and John confront this man, um, they are not trying to introduce to him, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 a, a huge loan, or you know, where he can make a lot of money and, and you know make a huge returns and then repay it, you know, uh, 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 interest free, you know, after a ten-year grace period. No, 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 no. They are trying to show him that he is a victim of his own perceptions. See, God can bring something. But God doesn't shove it down your throat. You have got to be in a position where you can be able to say, you know what, and make a response to God. You know, one of the things, a trouble I have with the church of today is that, uh, you know, you have people that pray, you have people that sing songs, you have people that dance, you have people that, you know, know how to shout and uh, hallelujahs, but you don't have people that have known how to make a response to God. God. Because
Because at the end of the day, you know, it is a shift in your mind. You know, I love it when a man becomes sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's my best moment when a person says, is this it? Is this how things are going to be? Is this how we will continue to exist? Can there be something we can do to improve the situation? That's the moment. That's the aha moment. That's the wonderful moment because it means a person begins to think outside the box. I want to challenge you today and it doesn't matter don't don't say because you are an orphan and therefore you will always be on the other side of life no i will show you many orphans in the bible that still rose and came to the side where nobody expected them to be we have looked at this uh, a platform about the slaves who became queens we were talking about queen esther not too long ago we have looked on this platform about men and women who emerged you know uh, widows like ruth and naomi you you know, for whom you would actually be, you would be excused if you thought, uh, for these women now, it's over. Things are finished. You can put a big cross on them and just shunt them to the history, you know, uh, to the, to, to, to the, to, to, to the, to the uh, 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 you know, uh, areas of history and say they will never become again. But, uh, but you know what? You are wrong because uh, uh, they, they began to think outside the box and, and these two women went on to become the most blessed women. We talked here about the four lepers. You know, that were outside the city gates. Death is staring them in the face. But all these people I'm mentioning, there is one thing that is actually common to all of them. They began to shift their perception. Just like one of the four lepers who said, why sit here until we die? Is this it? Are we going to sit here until we die? Is this how it is going to be? I mean, are we just going to keep dying here slowly? I don't know about you guys. I will rise and go there and try to find some food to eat. And the other said, we are going with you. The moment they took that action, we have seen in the Bible, God responded. And God initiated something in the heavens that was the beginning of a turnaround, not only of the lives of these four men, but a turnaround of the entire city that was behind them. I want to challenge you today and say, hey, God is a great God and God has made the first initial move. Are you willing today to arise and say, beyond what I am seeing around me, I believe you have something greater for me than what I am looking at every day. I believe there is a greater door, you know, than the one I've been trying to scratch my way through. I believe you have greater plans than the miserable existence that I'm seeing around me. Lord, I want to lift up my my hand toward you. I believe what you have said to me. I want to take the first initial steps to respond to what you have already done on my behalf. You know, there is something about you. Don't just sit there and die. Don't just sit there in resignation. Don't just sit there and say because the business collapsed. Yes, the business collapsed. We are all, we are all uh, agreeing with you on that one. But out of the ashes of the ruined business can come an even greater business than the first one. Out of the ashes of the collapse, you know, a project can come a bigger project than the one that you had. You can rise. And the issue is not how, how you've fallen into the dust. The issue is whether you're going to sit in the dust or you're going to arise out of the dust and say, you know what? Having hit the bottom, I am now lifting my head up. I want to begin to climb. And this time I want to climb higher than the place or the level where I once used to be. That's what God means when he says, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. Are you willing to change your perception? This man, when they say to him, look on us. And he looked on them and they say, guy, silver and gold we don't have. We know that's what you are conditioned to look for. In your mind, you, there is only silver and gold. If you get gold, my, you can even dance from your stretcher, you know. But silver and gold we do not have. But there is something we have, which is the greatest thing that you have ever needed in your life. And his attention was on them, wondering what kind of customers are these. And then they say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, holding his hand, he expected to receive money. But it's just flesh to flesh contact. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. 
the moment they pulled him up and he responded by coming up, his feet received strength. I want you to understand something. In that instance, there had to be a change of perception. It's not always money that you need. See, we get into a lot of problems sometimes. He thought what he needed was more money. And more money so he can build a house. More money so he can actually sustain himself. More money so that he can have something to eat. More money. He thought his problem was money. No, 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 no. His problem was that he does not have the capacity to be able to make the money as a well able bodied man. What he needed was good health. God knows what you need before you ask of him. And oftentimes, we are asking God the wrong things, not the things that really are the things that we need. The Lord Jesus said, you know, you ask, but you do not have because you ask wrongly. Sometimes, sometimes we are guilty of asking wrongly. And when we ask wrongly, God in his benevolent attitude he knows what's best. He doesn't respond to the wrong request. Now watch this. Let me just touch point number two, and that will be our last for today. I've broken this into three like I promised you. Point number two is this. If you are to rise to your full potential, you must go beyond the boundaries drawn by your circumstances. Go beyond the boundaries drawn by your circumstances. Look at what verse 2 says. It says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who were entering into the temple. Lame from his mother's womb, whom they laid daily at the gate Beautiful. You know, these were his circumstances. Lame from his mother's womb. So he's a cripple, he's a handicapped man, incapable, so to say, you know, of doing things for himself. Even to come here, you know, good friends have to carry him and deposit here, deposit him here. If he wants any convenience rooms anywhere, he has to just say, please, somebody, can you take me to the gents' room, please, please. And people must carry him and take him to the little entrance. He will crawl in there, and after he's done, he will crawl out, wash his hands, and just sanitize himself, and then he will be back on this little stretcher and back to the gate. I mean, so here is a man you classify as a handicapped, a cripple, helpless, incapable of doing things for himself, an unfortunate man. And you know, life seems to have drawn a boundary around him, and it seems uh, this boundary limits him. And it's like we can never be greater than this. We can never go anywhere beyond this. I want to speak to somebody on the other side of this broadcast today. I don't know where life has left you. It says, lame from his mother's womb, okay? He didn't choose to be like this. But somewhere, circumstances of life shoved him into a particular place and deposited him there. I don't know whether circumstances of life have left you orphaned or circumstances of life have left you widowed or circumstances of life have left you uh, divorced or whatever the situation could be. Or circumstances of life have left you depleted, bankrupted because your business just came to a crushing uh, 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 finale and uh, and that's it and, and uh, since then you seem to have broken a feather you are not the man we once knew your confidence is shaken and gone uh, you're scared about the future wondering how things will be you're contemplating making certain decisions you know to go to certain places by the way never make decisions under duress because you can easily make the wrong decisions Never make a decision under pressure. But you know, one thing I want you to understand is this. You must begin to understand, and this is what is being introduced to this man. Nothing, 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 nothing should draw boundaries around you. Haven't we looked here at many different people? We have talked here about Jephthah, the son of a prostitute. 
you know, and because he was a prostitute, others, you know, always felt, that's, that's it, you know, he, you, they even say to him, you cannot share in our father's inheritance with us, because you are the son of a strange woman, meaning you are the son, you are an inconvenient child, you were not planned for, you were born as an accident, you were born accidentally, you, you cannot become an inheritor of our father's wealth. And they kicked him out of their father's premises. And, and he went out in the wilderness and he became, a, a, you know, um, a, a stranger, a pariah. Out in the, you know, uh, 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 almost a family list, if you like to call him that way. But yet, Jephthah was not to be, uh, 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 his life was not to be ended that way. Nobody knew at this time that the same guy they've kicked out was going to become a guy who was going to rule over them, you know, in a couple of years uh, ahead. I want you to understand nothing in life should become final. And I know why I'm saying that. I am saying that because there is a great God in heaven. There is a God that is above all things and he sits over all things and is in charge of all things. And listen, even though certain things have been allowed to happen in your life, they are not necessarily there to make you get buried and become a forgotten entity. God is able to take you from where you are now. He is going to prove that he is God who can take you where nobody else could have taken you from and still lift you into a dimension where nobody else dreamed, dreamt you can ever come to because of your circumstances. I want you to understand, you know, I don't know what the circumstances surround you right now. I don't know of the things I've described, what circumstances surround you right now, but one thing I want to say to you in the name of the living God, is that we have a God that is more than able and he is far greater than the circumstances of your life. Never ever measure God by the circumstances of your life. You know, your, the circumstances of your life are nothing in the eyes of the almighty God. His power, his authority goes over and above and beyond all the circumstances of your life. God is more than able and God is more than able to lift you beyond the situations and the issues, you know, around about your life even in the now. And here this man was being introduced to this thought. Do remember that your boundaries do not necessarily determine your destiny. You may be poor, you may be single, you may be an orphan, you may be a retrenchee, you may be a widow, you may be divorced, you, 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 you may be a, a bankrupt businessman, the list is endless, you know, you may have failed many exams, I don't know, the list is endless, you know, and the things that we have put to determine destiny are not the things that God determines destiny by. A prisoner came out of the prison and became the king, becomes a pharaoh's second in command. A slave girl becomes a queen in a foreign country. A son of a poor man becomes a ruler. The smallest member of the family becomes a, 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 a giant slayer and becomes the champion of Israel, David. It's not, it's not where you are that it defines who you are. It's a wrong thinking. I want you to get that out of your mind. Yes, certain things have happened. Yes, certain things have been beyond your control. Yes, certain things have lamentably collapsed, you know, to the bottom. But I want you to understand, God is not shaken by the things that shake you. He's able to take you from where you are now and lift you to where you have never been, even exceeding where you actually arrived in the last instance. So I want to challenge you and say, your current position does not define your destiny. Cross your boundaries. I want to see people crossing their boundaries. Just because you started in a certain way does not mean you will end that same way. Your background does not take away your destiny. I want to pray for you right now, this very moment. I want to pray for you. 
I know in the maze of the challenging circumstances in which we are passing through, many people, their light is dimmed. Some of them, their light is off completely. Others have even despaired of life itself. Others just don't have the momentum to take another step forward. Others have just given up the battle altogether. Many have re resigned themselves to where they are, and their perception is that uh, this is how things will be. I don't think I will ever get out of this rat. I think uh, I will remain in these circumstances. Nothing will look up for me. I want to pray with you right now and I want to pray for you. Father in the name of Jesus as you have laid this word in my heart I know somebody, someone on the other side of this broadcast is listening and it is this word that was intended for them at this particular moment. I pray that God may reach out to you in those circumstances and that things are turning around on your, on, on your life. Things will turn around and the thing that you greatly feared, it will not actually happen. It will not come your way. You have already hit the rock bottom, but God is able to lift you up and take you into a higher dimension. May God elevate you. May God begin to bring a new tide to you. May God begin to lift you up one step after a time. There is a great man in you. There is a great woman in you. There is a champion in you. That person cannot just be forgotten, cannot just be abandoned, cannot just be buried into history. You know, there's something within you. You were born to become. Change your perception. Refuse to sit behind the circumstances, but the, but the boundaries are drawn by your circumstances. You are, there is more to you than what your circumstances are trying to dictate. There is much more about you than what others perceive. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may the grace of God come flowing into your heart in this very moment. May the hand of God raise you up from the ashes of defeat and failure, from the ashes of orphanhood and widowhood, from the ashes of, uh, of loss. May God begin to raise you up and transform your fortunes. Great men and great women come from the place exactly like where you are right now. May you become a living testimony in the precious and worthy and holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, next week on the other side of this broadcast. Between now and then, and then, God keep you in perfect peace. Shalom.